an EV. I've decided, well I've got rid of the Mitsubishi now, I no longer own it, and I've gone to a full EV, a little bit quicker than I thought, but I'll go into more detail about why I did that in a future episode. But this episode is all going to be about just the first impressions of it. Here is my first impressions of my new car. So first impressions of the Atto 3. Well this is actually the second day that I've had the car, not, not the first and certainly not after pickup. I'm on my way home, driving through the wheat belt. So I'm sort of filming a little bit out of order this time. And as you know, my wife bought an Atto 3, which I drove home as well. But now I've got time to do a little bit of the first impressions, I'm happy to share it. So I think side on, in particular, the car looks pretty good. As you can see, I do like the wheels. I think they look fantastic. The styling, I think it's, they've done a great job with it. And I do like these sort of scale things on the, on the back here. I think that looks really good. The spoiler too, and the shark fin antenna. If we go to the front, I think the front is a pretty inoffensive sort of front. So I don't think it's particularly good or particularly bad. I think it's sort of quite neutral. And of course it's got no radiator grill. You've just got the, the BYD logo there. So it looks fairly clean. That's one thing I will say of it. Again, you can see the other side of it here. I quite like the, the BY design badge there, the silver badge. And you saw on the other side it had the charging port as well. Now I really like the back. I know not everyone does. I think the EV badge, the Atto 3 badge, look pretty inoffensive. The Build Your Dreams logo, which I believe they're going to take off in new model, models, a lot of people don't like it. I've got a bit of a special connection to the word dreams. I had a lot of dreams myself as a teenager and in my twenties. A lot of people tell you at that age that you can't achieve them and I've taken great pleasure in, in making many of my dreams come true over the years so I actually don't mind it. I think I'm in, in the tiny minority that probably doesn't mind it but having said that I think whatever you choose to do at the back of the car here it definitely does look nice and clean if you remove some of those badges and some people prefer that. For me I'm not particularly worried in, but the rest of the styling as you can see I think the, the, the light there which goes across the back looks really really good and I've had a tow bar fitted to mine you can see and I think it looks pretty good the way, the way it's all set up there as well it looks quite nice and I'll do a, a separate review about the tow bar so you can I can tell you a little bit more about what happened with that but other than that I think it looks really nice at the back I think it, actually that's one of the best parts of the car I know it might be in a minority there, but that's what I think. So let's have a little look at some more of the inside of the car, which I know also some of the interior is a little bit polarizing for people. So of course you've got the famous guitar strings here, which you know may or may not be to your, your liking, and probably irritating to a lot of people in the, in the short time they've been out. Um, yeah, it's a little bit gimmicky. But really, the rest of it, I quite like. Hats off to BYD for doing something bold and different. It's certainly different to the interior of my last car, which you know was the Mitsubishi Outlander, which was yeah, positively boring and normal compared to this. But I, I quite like everything. I, I really love these door handles with the, it looks like it's a speaker built into it. And I really like these too. Now, one of the things I thought when I first saw the car online was I thought the interior looked a bit cheap and plasticky. It's only when I actually sat into it I realised that the materials are quite quality. So I have mentioned this before in some of my, my reviews. I really think that the build quality is now rivaling the Japanese and the Korean. So you've got the lovely large touch screen there, which I have to say the graphics probably exceed anything that Tesla's doing at the moment. I think it's a lot more vibrant than that. And you don't actually need to go into the touch screen to open the glove box. Woohoo, which is really great. The seats, 
they're, they're reasonably comfortable. Some people don't like the headrests, and I haven't had an issue so far. But I did take my... You can see I've got some sheepskin things. I took off my other car there, which I can use if I have any issues when I'm driving. But so far on a long trip, it's been great. And, of course, it's got the binnacle here. I can probably show you a little bit more. I've been charging here, and it's just doing a top cell balance here. So I've been on 99% a while. But I can perhaps show you some of that later on. But other than that, I think it's quite nice here at the front. Like the Outlander, it's a bit of a it's a bit of an illusion, the space. It looks smaller than what it is. So from the outside you wouldn't think it's is quite as big. And I do like the fact that they've got some physical buttons here in the middle, which is really, really good. Although I never really sit people in the rear of my cars, there is plenty of room in, in the rear here. You could easily sit a couple of teenage kids or, you know, a couple of uh, adults as well. It wouldn't be an issue. I just use it to store stuff and it will be a work vehicle and it's there's plenty of room. That's all I can really say about it. There's, there's no issues with it. Okay, I've got quite a bit of stuff in, in the back here. I've got to repack this properly. Uh, had to chuck it all out yesterday when I had a second tow bar company rectify what the first one did. So I have to repack it all, but yeah, there's, there's enough room in there. It's obviously smaller than the car I'm coming from, the Outlander, which had quite a big boot, but underneath there is the, the repair kit and the compressor. But I'm pleased to say one thing about this car is, maybe I'll show you, show you that later. I might even re refilm this. I'll show you that the that the underneath is quite big there and you'll be able to put a spare tire. Right and lastly let's have a look in here. Now the BYD doesn't come with a front FO3. Normally this is what you get. There's the motor down there and you can see there's it's quite a big space there so I'm not sure why they didn't engineer one. But hey that's just just what we got dished up. But I've gone to a, a third party to get something fitted. It's a moulded thing here. And it just sits on with these little Velcro tags there. So it's easy to, to go in and out. It just basically sits there nice. And it's got some, some foam here. So I'm going to put my charging cables in here later. I just picked that up yesterday. And it sits in there nice and snugly. You've got access to the battery. And look, when you want to get the car serviced, you can just pull that out. So the people who service it have got access to it. So great solution. So I'll put a link in the description. If you're in Perth, you can contact this guy and he'll be able to get you get you a frunk if that's what you want. I, I'm very happy with it so far. Taking everything out because I've got to repack this soon continue on with my trip but there you go I can lift this up now and you can see it's the whole board you can actually take out as such and then you can see there you've got the compressor kit the goo I'm just going to take the charging cable out because I'm going to put them in the front so I will do a video on it later but this can all be taken out here and you can fit in then a space saver. Some people have said they've even fitted a full size spare here underneath. I haven't seen a video of that yet. I've only seen the ones with the space saver, but um, I've ordered a space saver. And when that comes, I'll do a video on it and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. But that's great for me. If you live in a rural area, that's one advantage to, to having this car. You, Cause you know, a lot of cars, not even ice cars these days, a lot of them don't have a spare, but you know, when you're hundreds of kilometres from anywhere, you, 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 you probably want one, you want the security. So, yep, I'm glad to say that this has at least got a spot where you can put one. And I don't need to have a rack like I did on my last car. The car now, and you can see, yeah, that's the, where the cable goes. So, fits nicely in there. I haven't put it, <laughs> a bit too lazy to pack it properly. But there you go, that's, that's a good option for the front to put your charging cable there at the front there. Back onto the light. I just had it dark because I was driving last night and I was really tired last night. But anyway, so you can have a quick squeeze. That's what the navigation looks like. And you know, the, this, 
the screen is very responsive and you know you can go in and do all the settings you want okay so there's there's quite a lot of settings you can do here and as i said i think the the dynamic of the screen and the graphics i think they they probably exceed the tesla maybe not quite as good as the polestar probably the polestar i think has had the best out of all the ones i've i've looked at anyway here's the binnacle so yeah fully charged some people say the some of the graphics are a little bit small hard to read so hopefully that's something they can improve on i agree i think the odometer is very small the trip meter is very small as well so you can see on the right hand side here you've got the range you've got the battery percentage so yeah the battery percentage is a little bit small outside temperature is there at the top and of course you've got the speed recognition there so yeah but the binnacle is a great idea so i wish they had it on the teslas it would make the tesla a more attractive proposition in my opinion um but yeah anyway it's, it's there on the byd which is really really good so that's finishes off the first impressions of the byd atto 3. one thing i haven't mentioned yet is i changed the tires so i've got the michelin e primacies on and I have to say, they're excellent. They not only look great, but geez, the cornering is so much better. And there's much less wheel spin taking off, especially, you know, when you're in sport mode. So definitely the acceleration is a lot better too. There's a lot more grip. I can definitely recommend the Michelin E-Primacy tires if you're looking to upgrade on the Atto. Okay, that concludes the first impressions that I've got of the BYD Atto 3, which is the second one in our family, strangely enough. Um, I'm not sure how long I'll keep the car. It'll probably be a little while. Um, it's, I think it's an excellent choice. It's a, it's a great package. And in upcoming episodes, I'm going to go a little bit more into detail of why I chose this particular EV and why I decided to move away from the plug-in hybrid and, and just go for a full EV. So plenty of um, episodes to look forward to there. But in the meantime, thanks very much for tuning in today. I really appreciate that. Take care out there, and yeah, we'll see you very soon with some more episodes. Okay, bye for now. Cheers.